it's already off to a big week on the asylum seeker front. Welcome to the CEO bulletin from your CEO Con Karapani Gutierrez. Look, it's been a tough last week. There's been some wonderful positives that have been happening, which I'll get to in a moment, but there's also been some very heavy and, and sad news, namely the passing in a lower house and today, no doubt in the Senate, of Nauru as a place of offshore processing. Our government is about to spend $2.2 million a person to send them to an impoverished country with no prospect of resettlement, reunification with family and no genuine protection or safety. This Thursday we expect the first group to be sent to Nauru, um, 60 at least, possibly more, from Darwin and Christmas Island. We're also anticipating next week, probably, families will start being sent as well as part of them sending a message to, um, to the poor asylum seekers not to come to this country. We have already seen uh, $50 million being dedicated to Transfield, uh, a private business, and HMS to provide health services just for the first six months. And a tent city, this appalling tent city, where five people each will remain there. You'll be noticing lots of media footage and lots of access being given at the moment. Trust me, that access will not be there when you see those tents full of despairing families, people self-harming, and people on hunger strikes. Today, the Senate will pass and allow Nauru to be a place where asylum seekers can be sent. We signed off at the APEC conference a couple of days ago, Papua New Guinea, Manus Island to be the second. But they're already both full. 2,030 people have arrived since the 13th of August, which has been a cut-off date where anyone who comes from that date will be sent to one of those two islands. Those capacity of the two of them combined is just 1,350. So we're already 780 beyond that. What's going to happen to those other 780? Well, they're going to stay in limbo until we can dump them somewhere else. And no doubt Malaysia is in sight. And no doubt you already heard this morning Bowen talking about, well, if the Liberals support sending people back to Sri Lanka and to Indonesia that are not signatories, well, why not Malaysia? So watch it grow. What's the momentum push? Remember and keep communicating to people about why the High Court ruled Malaysia as illegal last time. This is a country that in the last decade has publicly caned and whipped 35,000 asylum seekers that have sought protection there. This is a country that is not a signatory. This is a country where some 6,000 people in the last decade have died in their detention centres. It's not safe. It won't afford protection. And do not forget that to Malaysia and Nauru and Manus Island, our minister, Chris Bowen, the guardian for unaccompanied children, will intend to send hundreds of such children without guardian, without protection, to countries without family unification and without any prospect of resettlement. It is shameful. It is appalling. The ASRC will continue to campaign. We'll continue to get the stories out like we did last week from a group of men in Darwin pleading to the Australian public saying, we know Nauru is a place that you send people to go mad. Please don't send us there for us to be a symbol of this as well. We are hearing news today of babies in Darwin that are also destined for Nauru. Pamela Kerr, campaign's corner, was busily talking to the men, trying to provide whatever practical and emotional support that she could. We will not be silent on this injustice and we will keep campaigning on it. On more heartening news, there's been a lot of support from the community out there. Even in the last week, I've been speaking to young people across this state who are keen and hungry to learn, keen and hungry to help asylum seekers. And we are getting offers of support from donations to volunteers, some 700 booked in for tonight's Volunteer Information Night. And everywhere I go, you've got just as many people going, how can I help? How can I make a difference? What is the positive that I can do? In the last week as your CEO, I was on Triple R, ABC TV on Sunday morning talking about asylum seekers. I spoke to hundreds of school kids in the last couple of weeks on the same issue. And tonight I'll be speaking at St. Paul's Primary School where a group of kids put on a fade and raised some $3,000 for the ASRC. I even heard a beautiful story of a group of kids at a Brunswick Primary School that simulated a refugee camp for a week by getting rid of the desks and tables. Uh, to see what it would be like to be in a refugee camp as a child and ask their parents and family to sponsor them, raising some $1,700. As long as there is young people with hunger and hope, there's always hope for the future. And do not forget, we're 800 strong out there fighting the good fight. And just like when the ASRC was born and rose in the ashes of the Tampa, so it will rise in moments like this. In these moments of darkness, it is not for us to get dispirited and to lose hope. The challenge for us is to go, what now? 
How do we stand united against such adversity? How do we speak out against such injustice? How do we take every ounce of compassion and of goodwill and of heart and of decency that is in our hearts and share that? Break those myths. Start that conversation. Put a human face to what is happening and not be silent. We can win this struggle. We can win this battle together. Thank you as always for your wonderful work and support. Let's keep going strong. Till next week.